Hello, Annie Codd here and today I'm teaching you everything you need to know about the underwater labs in Rust. Remember to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button. The underwater labs are one of the newest monuments in Rust. You usually get three locations for the labs and they can be found by locating the text. Underwater labs, who would have guessed? The labs are almost never the same, so don't think because you've been to one once, you know what they're all about. The different styles make different challenges, and this makes creating a tutorial quite different, but that sounds like an Anicod problem. Well, you can use no clip to fly down and get him through the wall. Alright, let, let's say you haven't got no clip, then you've really only got two choices. Either a submarine that you can get from the fishing village, or get some scuba gear. Don't try and swim down without any of this stuff from the surface, because you'll drown. It's way too deep. Once you've decided on your mode of transport, you can only access the labs from underneath. You'll see the lights shining down, generally two small clusters, which are the human entry points. That sounds a lot ruder than it should. And then a larger cluster which is made to dock your submarine. Ah, that sounds quite rude as well actually. Personally, I always like to gain entry through the sub hatch. Generally, it's a little bit safer. And let's face it, you don't want to do all that swimming just to get shot in the face as soon as you poke your head up. Now, whichever the way you choose, remember there's windows in almost every room and corridor. Make sure you have a quick look through the windows and make sure you can spot some scientists. If all the scientists are dead, then there's a good chance you're not alone, so be prepared for some PvP action. Also, when you do choose a way up, there's a good chance you're going to run into a scientist immediately armed with either an M9 pistol or an MP5, so be prepared for that. Generally speaking, you'll have to deal with about 6 or 7 scientists in the underwater labs, that's if you want to complete all of the puzzles on every floor. Well, there's lots of different loot crates, some new and some old, all of which are pretty interesting. You've got the parts crate, the new cube crate, a component crate, an ammunition crate, the older style toolbox that you've probably seen, your hardcore elite crates that have the best loot but they're hiding behind some keycard doors. The new yellow crate. A new style oil and fuel store. Pretty obvious what's in there. A vehicle parts crate. Some medical crates located in the infirmary. And finally a couple of different food crates. There's a few little fun places to visit in here. You can use the sub hatch to catch the rarest fish in the game. If you want to learn how to fish, then check out the YouTube video up in the cards now. Just remember to come back to this one. There's a tannoy that you can project your voice across the whole underwater labs. A good way to warn other players, you've got 12,000 hours and they better be scared. There's a control room where you have access to the cameras so you can see what's going on in your labs. But my favourite place by far is just a place you can go, you can relax, you can listen to some music and unwind. Yep. I'm talking about the bog. Once you've dropped your guts, you'll be ready to complete the puzzles. Now this is where it gets tricky. Because no two labs are the same, it's very difficult to give you a walkthrough of the puzzles because each puzzle room in each set of labs will vary slightly. Now, there is a couple of similar puzzle modules and you've generally got four types. To gain access to every room, I would recommend taking one of each card, that's a blue key card, a red and a green, and also a couple of fuses as well. So as I mentioned, there's generally four types of puzzles. There's an infirmary that only needs a fuse, and it's as simple as just putting your fuse in. Don't forget to activate the switch, hit the button and you're in. It's as simple as that. There is a couple of rooms that need the green key card, these rooms are generally already powered, so all you need to do is swipe your card to gain access. Generally, there's a few boxes and crates in these rooms to collect. One of the rooms even has a boom box to play, and even a cool little toilet that you can sit on. There's a few blue puzzles, 
one of which is already powered, just swipe and enter. In here, there's a gaming chair and a few other decent crates. There's a second blue puzzle that you'll find, and in here will be more crates and more loot. Those rooms are about as easy as it's gonna get. There's also some rooms that require a mix of cards, for example, there's a set of rooms that need a fuse, a green key card and a blue key card to gain access. Simply open the green door, put the fuse in, don't forget to turn the power on and that will activate the blue door. Swipe the blue door and enter. In there there's a few more decent crates, an unusable workbench, some crude oil and a few other bits. Finally, there's red puzzle rooms. Generally speaking, these need a couple of fuses, maybe even other coloured keycards like blue. And the best example for this is I had to swipe into a blue room to access the fuses. I had to insert two fuses and that activated the red door. Swipe the red door and enter. In here, as you can imagine, is the best loot. There's some elite crates in here and some other large crates as well. I also found a red door that just needs a fuse and a single red keycard. Put the fuse in, hit the button to activate the door, and I gained access, again, to some more decent loot. There's definitely more styles of puzzle out there. Remember, the labs do change, so you will get a mixture of different styles. If yours isn't covered in here, I apologise. But I would recommend visiting all three on the map to find which one you like the best and which one's got the best loot, and stick with that one. In my opinion, the underwater labs can be for players of all abilities. The scientists can't go up and down stairs, which means you've only really got a couple to take care of of any given floor. You can do some puzzles with key cards and some without, depending on the level of loot you're after. You can fish here to get tons of scrap and get the best fish in the game. They're accessible using basic stuff like a scuba tank. I think these are underrated, especially for early game. You can get tons of loot very easily with very little effort. And if you haven't visited these yet, then I would strongly recommend paying them a visit. Now I really appreciate you watching this far. If you have, let me know you're a legend in the comments down below and I'll drop you an Anacod heart. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what I'm up to and what I'm working on next. If you have got a request for a video, let me know down in the comments and I'll add it to the list and start working on it. Remember to go and check out the Patrons and if you want to be a Patron, the link is in the description below. And again, I'll see you in the next video.